Welcome to Inside the Indians, your source for insider information on the tribe. Stay with us as we bring you the latest about the players, managers, and people behind the scenes at Victory Field. Now here's your host, the longtime broadcast voice of the Indians, Howard Kelman. Hi everybody, I'm Howard Kelman and welcome to Inside the Indians. On today's show, we'll talk with Marty Peavy, the current manager of the Iowa Cubs and an Indianapolis Indians player in both 1988 and 89, two championships seasons. We'll be back with Marty after these words. Manager of the Iowa Cubs is our guest on Inside the Indians. He's a former Indianapolis Indian player on championship teams in the late 80s. Marty, how are things going with the Iowa Cubs? Oh, we're okay. You know, we've been playing uh, pretty good baseball. You know, we've had a lot of player moves over the last, uh, well, whole season, but especially over the last month. Um, you know, it's just it's triple-A baseball. You know, you've managed the Iowa Cubs for 10 years, which is a credit to you and your knowledge and your people's skills. What's it like managing at the AAA level now opposed to when you first started 10 years ago? Um, everything's kind of reciprocal, you know. Everything runs in cycles. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of curious you ask that because we were kind of a little bit, I would say we were, kind of going through the same, the Chicago Cubs, that is, we're going through a little bit of the same thing uh, back then in 2013 that we're going through now, a little bit of a transition, uh, kind of a rebuild. Um, and so, you know, it's just a matter of now of, uh, you know, kind of recouping um, and getting back to those years where we were in the playoffs or fighting for a pennant every year. Is it much different managing now with all the player moves? There are so many more of them than there were 10 years ago. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's difficult at times. You know, a lot of times, especially late in the year, uh, whether you're fighting for a championship or the big clubs fighting for one or, say, the double-A clubs fighting for one. So, they, you know, they're going to usually keep their teams together, especially late later in the year, August, September. and um, the players that get called up, well, they get replaced with kids from maybe from Arizona, from rookie ball or, or uh, you know, a ball. So we're kind of going through that little bit of that transition right now. But, you know, hey, they've got a Chicago Cub uniform on and we're going to get them ready to play in the big one. What's the transition like for you not managing anymore with the pitcher batting strictly designated hitter? Say that again. No longer do pitchers bat. So everybody has a designated hitter all the time. As a National League team, there were days when you would bat the pitcher. What's the difference for you now not employing your pitchers as hitters? Howard, I hate it. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's – um. that's where – you know, that's where – I would get my role players at bats. Um, those guys that that didn't get to play, you know, they weren't everyday guys. They were veteran guys. Um, they're uh, very, very valuable on your team. Um, you know, the the backup shortstop, the fourth outfielder, the second catcher, if you can carry three. Um, those guys. You know, I was able to get Taylor Davis, you know, 200 plus at, at bats a year because of being a, he, you know, he was, he could play third, he could play first. He caught, he caught a lot of winners, but he got his at bats um, because I double switched him into the game and uh, there's no more double switch. So guys like him and especially utility infielders end up getting 150 at bats instead of 250. You know, there was so much more strategy in the game without the DH and as opposed to just hitting and hitting and hitting. Sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, uh, 
You know, it's uh, I think it, I think you know we just did a survey for Major League Baseball, and it um, the, a lot of the questions on there were asked about um, what do we think about the bigger bases, the shot clock. Um, let's see what else. So uh, you know the way the game is, um, the way the the clock has. Do you think the fans like it more? Do they like it less? And I'm the clock. I am all in. I think that's the best thing to happen to baseball. I know if I went to take my family to go see the Braves there in Atlanta, you know, the game's four hours long. We're leaving in the seventh inning. Nobody wants to sit there for four hours. Um, guys stepping out of the box and taking, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds in between pitches. The pitcher walking around the mound, uh, and, and it takes him 45 seconds to tell the slab again. So um, I love the clock. I, big leaguers, they can adapt. They might, they're going to piss and moan and gripe and, and uh, complain, but you know what? At the end of the day, if it's better for the game, if it's better for the fans, if it's because listen, a lot of the fans don't come to the game to watch the game. They come to, you know, be entertained. And that's what, and especially in the minor leagues, that's what brings families out and that's what gets us all a paycheck. I think that's very well said. The pitch clock, I think, is a big success. The average time of games has been shaved by almost 30 minutes. So that tells you all you need to know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's, it's going to be a huge part of the game from now on. Um, the, you know, the management and the, and the Players Association, they just need to kind of stay out of it, let Major League Baseball do their thing. and. Um, and keep the clock involved in the major league games. We'll have more with Marty Peavy. This is Inside the Indians. Marty Peavy is our guest on Inside the Indians. The current Iowa Cubs manager has been for 10 years. And he played for the Indianapolis Indians in the late 80s. Marty, let's go back to your playing days. And you brought a great deal of energy, which I thought was terrific with you, your upbeat, positive attitude, which you do as a manager, too. But take us back to those days with the Indianapolis Indians. Woo, Howard. That's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I, I, it was... Uh, I mean, every player on the team was good. We didn't have, I don't remember having any bad players on the team. And that's the truth. In 88 and 89, we, but we, you know, we had, gosh, Howard, we had really good players. I know that sounds like, you know, what is this guy talking about? But I'm telling you, those teams were good. They were, uh, they, we, we had a lot of, the Expos signed a lot of good free agents and um, they drafted and developed some good players. You got away with nothing back then. When you made a mistake, you got, you know, I mean, it might be the next day, but you got spoken to about it. Yeah, that's a great point. One of the things that stands out, you talk about a mistake. I remember a game with the Indians having a man on first and two outs and future Hall of Famer Larry Walker was batting and he tried to bunt which you don't do with a man on first and two outs unless you're down by several runs. Anyway, Razor Shines yelled out, hey, bunt one in the gap. <laughs> Got his yeah. point across. Yeah, he was uh, – and that's – speaking of, speaking of uh, Razor, what a great teammate he was. But now I had played in the league, uh, you know, the, a year or two before that, and, um, you know – Playing against Razor, you hate him. Playing with Razor, you love him because he would irritate you as an opponent. But he, but he was a good player. I mean, he could hit, could really hit. But you got let known. You, you know, it was known um, by your veteran teammates when you uh, screwed up. I mean, they would let you know, especially, especially on the bases. You know, you made a great point a moment ago about there not being bad players. Back then, if you weren't cutting it, you'd either be assigned to double A or you 
to be released. Now you have guys with ERAs over five, over six, who are pitching almost every day. And it's a much different game. These guys are not succeeding, yet the opportunity is still there. Yeah, it's um, it's funny you said that because – Number one, we don't have as many draft picks, so there's not – I don't think we're really truly going to see um, the draft. The Let's see, I guess 20 – in 2020, we had 10 picks, 21, 20 picks, and 22, 20 picks, correct? Yes. Um, I don't think – I think in probably in the next year or two, and they and a lot of teams. Well, everybody dropped a, a league, a rookie league, or you know whatever. So I think that um, in the next year or two, it's truly going to affect the higher levels. You know, it, you're gonna you're gonna see teams that um, don't have enough position players that are signing a lot of guys out of independent baseball or non-drafted free agents are going to be signed. Uh, college seniors, um, we're you know, as an industry, we're going to be short of baseball players. I think good quality baseball players. Hmm. That's not good to hear because that's that's going to present even more challenges. Well, I, 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 you know, I just think that's the way it's going to go. I think you know, I, I, it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder to. Uh, I mean, the, the rosters are getting bigger, and and yet we're signing fewer and fewer players. You know, we carry 33-man roster, or we can't. We're capable of carrying a 33-man roster, yet we're signing fewer players. So it's it has to catch up. It's a conundrum that has to be uh, brought to light or will be brought to light sooner or later. What's it been like managing in Des Moines all these years? Man, Howard, it's one of the best places I've, you know, it's, it, you know, my family is, is uh, my kids are in their mid to early 20s. And, um, but my wife, she loves it. I love it. It's a great place to just, it's, it's a really, it's a really good city. It really is. The downtown area is awesome. It's not, it's, it's still small enough that you can walk around at night and feel safe and there's plenty to do. Um, you know, on Saturdays, they have a big farmer's market down, downtown. It's really awesome. It's, it really is. If That's you great been, to hear. You need to, you need to go to Des Moines in the summer. It's uh it's a really good place to be. It is. Well, We'll have more with Marty Peavy on Inside the Indies. Current Iowa Cubs manager Marty Peavy, our guest on Inside the Indians. Marty, let's talk about Randy Johnson. He was a teammate, a friend of yours here in 1988 and 89. Give us your impressions of him back then and all he achieved. Oh, my gosh. So I put in 88, I pulled a hamstring in spring training and, and uh, started out in double A. And uh, I was there for like a month. And um, so when I got, I came back up to Indy and, you know, like, I guess it was probably May, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, we were in Buffalo. I met the team in Buffalo and Randy was pitching that night and I went out to warm him up and, and that, and it, well, it's still that way. Um, I go out to warm him up and the scoreboard, the, the big, the big scoreboard, you know, the, uh, the monitor is in straightaway center field and Randy's, you know, six eleven. And his hand is coming out of that freaking uh, all the lights of the scoreboard. And I had never caught Randy ever. And I'm just warming him up and he's throwing a hundred. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I thought, 
I, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I thought caught a lot of guys through hard, but I'm thinking to myself, I'm going, holy smoke, I can't even see the ball. But, uh, you know, Randy was uh, big and wiry and, you know, throwing gas and walking 10 and striking out 14 and throwing 130 pitches and, you know, just out there competing. He was, uh, he was something else. Once he, it took a while, but once he cut down on those walks, he then became a great major league pitcher. Oh my gosh. Well, Hall of Famer. Right. He could sling it. There's no doubt about it. Um, once he developed a little bit of a breaking ball, just a little bit. I mean, it was lights out, lights out. Um, he was uh, a special talent. He is a special talent. He was, um, you know, you don't, you, you don't, I mean, I don't know. He, it was kind of a once in a decade type pitcher, I guess you could say. You know, you just don't see that kind of talent anymore. And he was a great competitor, too. Once he got out there, he was really focused and determined. Yeah, do you remember, uh, who was the, wasn't Lemke, who was the shortstop? Lemke uh, played second. Who was the Richmond Braves? When, you know, he went on to play shortstop for the Braves for all those years of the 90s. Uh, shortstop for the Braves. Anyway. Yeah, Blouser. Blouser hits a line drive off of Randy Johnson's um, pitching hand in Indianapolis. Do you remember this? And he Not goes – he goes into the dugout and punches that big, solid oak bat rack in old Indianapolis, the old ballpark, and broke his glove hand. Do you remember that? Right, that I remember. Yeah. So it was Blouser hits a line. I was catching. And Blouser hits a line drive off of his pitching hand. They take him out of the game. He walks in the dugout and punches the bat rack and broke his glove hand. And he was going to get called up. Right. Yeah, that's setting back. But he spent the entire season in Indianapolis. And one of the things I remember is we were down two games to none in the AAA uh, Baseball World Series against Rochester. In Rochester for game three, we had to win, obviously, down two games to none. And he pitched great and won that game. And then yeah. the Indians came home and won three straight to win the series four games to two. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, he was uh, quite a competitor. He was, uh, he was something else. And we had, of course, we had, I think, the greatest manager of all time. I, I don't understand why I never got the opportunity in the big leagues of Joe Sparks. What a great people person he was. He got the most out of every single individual. He made people feel important. You know, he was a used car salesman in the off season. Oh yeah. I know. I know. I kept up with Joe for many, many years. As a matter of fact, I went and played for him in Toledo. Yeah, and that's about uh, three or four years later. Correct. That's right. I love Joe. He was he was a mentor of mine. I've got a uh, I've got some video next next time I see you, I'll show you some video of uh, him and Buck Rogers uh, sitting together, and I'm hitting. We're playing St. Louis and and uh, in the big leagues, and uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty you'll you'll like the video. It'll it'll put a smile on your face for sure. And that would have been 1989. Because of, after managing the Indianapolis Indians for three years, he got a chance as a coach with the Montreal Expos for one season. Yeah. Yep, he sure did. He was a good one. He was really good. <laughs> I remember him saying that we had a pitcher in 1986 named Bob Ochinko. Oh, yeah. And he said to Bob, Bob, I want you to do good, but not that good. And Bob was <laughs> like, well, what do you mean? Well, if you do good, you'll stay here and help the team. If you do really good, you'll be in the big leagues we'll lose you it's the way it was hey the funny thing is is the salaries you know if you were a good triple a player back then you know you you almost made as much as you made in the big leagues as a rookie you know i think back then the rookie made we made like 60 grand as a rookie and uh you could make half you know a little better than half of that as a you know a triple a free agent and you got a little bit of time in the big leagues too as a player with Montreal. 
That's right. Yep. Sure. Anything did. stand out from that? I caught nine games. I caught three shutouts. How about that, Howard? Terrific. That's absolutely so, terrific. I caught nine games in the big leagues and caught three shutouts. That's got to be worth something. You're proud of that. Marty, it's absolutely wonderful spending time with you. Thank you so much and continued success to you. Thank you, Howard. It's nice being here. That's Marty Peavy on Inside the Indians. thank our guest Marty Peavy. When he played, he brought tremendous energy to the ballpark every day and it rubbed off on his teammates. And he's in his 10th year of managing the Iowa Cubs, the Chicago Cubs AAA team. He's had a lot of success there. We will see you next week on Inside the Indians.